Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson 33 of the platform specific series of my 6502 assembly programming tutorials. This week we're going to be looking at the PC Engine. We're going to look, learn how to create hardware sprites and show them onto the screen. Now, the PC Engine sprite hardware is a bit different from the Tilemap hardware. It uses a different format of the sprites, and also rather than storing the sprite definition information in the VRAM, we actually store it in something known as the SATB, the sprite table. Ironically though, we actually store the settings in our video RAM and then initiate a transfer which will copy the data from the STAB into the VRAM and that will actually get the sprite visible on the screen. Now, when it comes to defining our sprite information, the picture data, it's actually in a different format to the regular tarmap. My Acro Sprite Editor does support it though, so you should be able to just use that to export them. However, if you're making your own sprites, you will need to use a different format for, for the sprite bitmap data to the regular tiles. So let's go over things and let's just have a little bit of a look at it. So each sprite is defined by a series of four words. There's a Y position, an X position, an address, which is the address of the sprite data in video memory. However, this is not all of the bits. It's only the top 10 bits. So we will need to do a bit shift of our true address and shift it five bits to the right to compensate for that. Then the fourth word is the other information, the Y flip, the X flip, and also some scaling information, a layering, whether it's in front of the background or behind it, and also a palette selection. Now, the sprites within the PC Engine are by default 16 by 16. However, we can connect neighboring hardware sprites together to make a bigger tile image. And, in, and we can go up to 32 by 64, which is why there's only one bit for connecting in the X axis and two bits for connecting in the Y axis. So that's how we can combine them together. And that's how we can define larger sprites. But we'll be just looking at the simple 16 by 16 ones in this example. Now, the actual image definition, as I say, is slightly different, but it's not too difficult. Basically, we have to write in words. We have to write each line of the first bit plane. And then we have to write each line of the second bit plane, the third bit plane, and the fourth bit plane to define the 16 by 16 area that it makes up the 16 color image. Now, as I said, if you use my AcroSprite editor, which I've got just here, it's included in the sources 7-zip download and it's free and open source. And if you just go to 6502 and PC Engine, you will see that there's a save all bitmap, which we've used in the past. We want to use PC, save PC Engine Sprite here, and that will save for the format of today's tutorial. Okay, well, let's go over to the source code. Let's see today's example running, and then we'll look at how it actually works. Okay, so here it is, and if I just fire this up on the PC Engine here, you can see we've got some hardware sprites. These crosshairs here are indeed hardware sprites. So let's have a look at the code and see how they actually are drawn to the screen. Okay, well, the first thing we need to do with these hardware sprites is we need to transfer the data to video memory somewhere. Now, we're going to use the memory address 2000 here as our destination for the video memory on the PC Engine, and that's of course in video memory VRAM, not just regular memory. And we're going to use the same function as we used before, the define tiles function, which will transfer the sprite into video memory. Now, although the actual um, bitmap data is different, the transfer procedure is identical, so we're using the same definition for the transfer that we did with the um, tilemap example. So if you've missed that, please go back and have a look at that, because we've already covered how to transfer the actual data into VRAM. We're just going to look at the actual sprite table format for this lesson here. Okay, now when it comes to actually using this sprite, getting it onto the screen, our um, 16 by 16 sprite, the crosshair example that you can see, is just a simple single sprite. And I'm defining a function called set hardware sprite. We're going to define an X position, a Y position, and these are both 16 bit here, you can see. We're defining a few other attributes here in HL, the Y flip, X flip, so on and so forth. And also we are defining the memory address of the sprite. Now you remember I said we only define the top 10 bits. Let's just go back and have a quick look at that. So you remember I said we only define the top 10 bits here. And as you can, you can see the X and Y positions are in here and that's why we're using a word for each. But um, of course we need to shift that to be the correct format because we've got our 2000 memory address, which is the true address. We need to bit shift to that to the right five times, which is what we're doing here. So we can easily see the true memory address, and that's the data that we need to pass to DE when we run our set hardware sprite example. So the first time we run this example, we're using hardware sprite number zero. The second time, we're using hardware sprite number one, and we're just drawing it a bit further down the screen. 
Of course, the important thing to understand is there's a physical limit to the number of hardware sprites that you can show on the screen. And the, the limit on the PC Engine is 64. So if we defined hardware sprite zero twice, then the second time would re remove the first time. So we're using hardware sprite zero for that top one, and then hardware sprite one for the one that's moved a little bit down the screen. So actually, all of the work here is being done by this hardware sprite function. Let's have a look at it just here. Where is it? Here it is. So we're going to define in our video memory the definitions of the sprites, and then we're going to transfer that all over to the sprite table, which we can't directly access. So we're going to be using memory address 7F00 as a temporary store, which will build up with the sprite information, and then we'll transfer it all across once we're done. Now there's four addresses per sprite, each address stores a word. So we're effectively going to multiply the sprite number we want to change by four. And that's what we're doing here. So we're just shifting to the left twice. And then we're selecting the memory address 7F as the top byte. And the bottom byte is the amount we just calculated, which will select the address within the um, temporary store for the sprite table that we're going to write for this sprite number. And that's what we've done there. Now we're going to need to select the data write because we've just selected the the memory address in VRAM we want to write to. Now we're going to write data to that, and that's what we're doing here. So we're loading our YPOS, storing the two bytes of that in into video memory just here, then the X position, and then the sprite address, and then the other attributes. So you can see that's all just done straightforward. And so really, um, as long as the settings we're using here are correct in the correct format, and of course this one's going to be a little bit tricky, and this one, but these are pretty straightforward, then um, we're really all done. And that will just set all of the data into that temporary buffer. The last thing we need to do is we need to start the transfer. And we do this with a special register, ST13, which is the VRAM to STAB block transfer source. You see that's just here. This is what we need to do, use to actually control the sprites. And this will start, start a fast transfer from VRAM to the STAB table. And that will actually get the sprite visible on the screen for us. And you can see that just here. All we need to do is we need to write the address of the desk of the VRAM that we want to transfer. So we're just doing that 7F00 here. And that will start the transfer and effectively it will show the sprite as well. So that's all it takes really. Um, I mean, the only tricky thing with the PC engine of getting the sprites working is d defining the bitmap data really and just figuring out the addresses. And once you've done that, it's very straightforward. So if you had other sprites, you just need to use the correct addresses here. And of course, define them either with Acu Sprite Editor or your own solution. So that's all there is to it. I mean, hardware sprites on the PC Engine aren't too bad at all, really. I mean, there's a few little tricks with it, but um, nothing too serious. And the PC Engine sprites, like most things on the PC Engine, are pretty powerful, so they're definitely worth you having a look at. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting. I hope you'll have a go with the PC Engine and have a go with the hardware sprites. If um, you've come across this and the PC Engine doesn't seem your thing, please take a look around my channel. I've got loads of the tutorials on 6502 systems and other processors as well, so I'm sure there's something you'll like. Um, anyway, whatever you decide to do, if you want to try the PC Engine, download the sources, they're on my website. But I hope you'll enjoy the PC Engine and I hope you enjoy programming in general. Anyway, thanks for watching today and goodbye.